Hey guys, Chris here. In this video, I'm gonna give you guys a full tour of the Mercedes-Benz EQS 584 Matic on the exterior, on the interior, and then we're gonna take a look at the infotainment system. Starting off with the exterior, this EQS is in a color called graphite gray metallic. And in my opinion, it looks black. It's kind of hard to spot that it has some gray in it. But if we actually take a look at the details here on the front bumper, this section here is actually black. You can see that it does have some gray. But most of the time, in my opinion, this car just looks black. It is a very dark color. This particular car also has the AMG exterior package, which gives it a more sporty front end. In my opinion, it looks better than the normal EQS. There will also be an EQS 53 AMG version out next year, so hopefully I'll get my hands on that. In my opinion, that looks even better. This car also is equipped with the LED headlights. You can see also it has this LED light bar running across the front end. You know, a signature look for the Mercedes EQ vehicles. You have it on the EQA, B, C, E, and the EQS. This car also has the optional diamond pattern. You can see here the small Mercedes diamonds without the actual ring is an optional extra. It also has the 360 camera, so you can see the front camera here on the front end. I think the front end is quite simple. It looks nice and also like it in AMG spec. But the most controversial thing about the new EQS is the profile or its silhouette because people don't seem to like the way this thing looks. It just looks like a blob. So let me know in the comment section down below what you think about the looks of the EQS. Do you like it? Don't you like it? And what EV do you prefer the looks of? I think it looks okay and it actually has this shape, this super slippery shape because it has the lowest drag coefficient of any EV on the market at 0.2 CD, making it super slippery and aerodynamic, giving it immense range. Take a look at my range video that will be linked down below. It's gonna impress you if you don't know about the stats of this car. This also has some optional 21 inch wheels with these blue details. And it's funny to see that 21 inches doesn't look too big, but this is a big car. It's more than 5.2 meters long with a wheelbase of more than 3.2 meters. It's about 1.92 meters wide and 1.55 meters tall. So this thing is almost as tall as most crossovers today and it's, it's so big this car. It is amazing. We're gonna take a look at the interior because you really get you know that interior volume with this uh, big exterior size. I myself, I'm not a huge fan of the exterior styling but if you get this in the right color with the right wheels and also in the AMG exterior package, I think it can look very nice. I actually like this car in two-tone, one of the, you know, the launch colors. So walking up closer, you can see that it has this uh, chrome strip on the bottom. This is a very classy vehicle, you know, just looking nice, but I think you can also get this with like a black package. You have chrome details around the windows, quite big chrome trim here, and then you have EQS there on the A-pillar. That is pretty nice. I overall like the look of this, you know, these, these details because it's, it's classy Mercedes. This is going to appeal to, you know, it's not going to appeal to your 30 year old or 40 year old. It's going to appeal to older people with more wealth because this is an expensive car. This car particularly, spec this way, is 1,426,000 kroners. Divide that by 10 to get it in euros. So it's an expensive car. This portion here does not open. This car does not have a frunk. So the way they have, you know, resolved, you know, filling washer fluid is to have your own uh, port or door here that you can open. And it is minus three and a half degrees outside. So you guys can see that this is actually struggling. I've just washed the car. So you have some ice uh, stuck here. Yesterday though, I was driving from Oslo to Bergen. I had real issues in minus 10, 13 degrees to get this open. So that video will be out later next week if you want to see how I resolve that. But that's a big weakness. If you live in the cold, this may seem like a cool and easy way to fill washer fluid, but it does have its flaws. Okay, walking backward, stepping over. You can see this is a really long car. It is so big, this thing. Walking over to the rear end, and this is maybe my favorite angle of the EQS, the rear end or rear three-quarter because this is where it maybe looks most traditional. 
It has this light bar across here and also check out this insanely cool rare LED light pattern. It's like this uh, spring shape where it just goes in circles, twines around. I mean, that is super cool the way that looks. It also has the light bar across here. You can see the badging, EQS 580, formatic, that mean it means it is four wheel drive. And then you open the trunk here by pushing this and then you also have the, the backup camera there. So the rear end, I mean, it's not, not a lot of happening. You have these chrome details on the bottom. You also have the black painted bottom bumper. You have some reflectors there. And then you have this spoiler just to break up the design. Of course, the other side looks exactly the same except for your charging port, which you can open by pressing like that. And it has this electronic assist release, but you still have this flap where you have to remove that there. I think other cars like the Audi e-tron, the big one has a better solution where you have this flap that ju just drops down. Feels more premium. This feels, you know, it doesn't feel as nice and expensive as other EVs that, that do this better. So I'm a little bit disappointed about that. But guys, let me know what you think about the design. What is your favorite, least favorite about the exterior of the EQS? Now let's take a look at the interior. And this car has keyless go and keyless entry. So I have the key in my hand. Stepping up to the car, the door handle should pop out of the bodywork like that. Pretty cool. And uh, if I press the lock button, on top of the key here, you can see that everything now folds into the bodywork and also the front mirrors. If I press the unlock button here again, the door handles now pop out of the bodywork. Pretty nice. You can also lock the car by pressing this indentation here on the door handle, but they seem to not work much of the time like that. That is pretty annoying. I have to press it like two or three times every time I try to lock this car. You can also do it from the rear doors. And this rear door seems to be more reliable than the front door handle, which is pretty annoying. And taking a look at the door handles, they look nice with Mercedes-Benz lettering there. They're also illuminated, as you guys can see, pretty nice. And if you pull the door handle, it actually does not feel mechanical. You can see there isn't too much movement in the actual door handle. So I think like on the Audi e-tron GT and also the big Audi e-tron, these are electronic releases, which are fine enough. But if you pull the door handle too quickly, you kind of catch it out and it feels like you're pulling on the door while it's still locked. Locked, not the nicest feeling. Though the actual door handle itself feels pretty nice and high quality. And also listen to the door's closing sound. Super solid, that is nice. Even though this car has frameless windows, which usually means that the door sounding sound isn't the, the best, but in this car, it is pretty awesome. So let's take a look at the front door and it's in the interior where the money has gone into. I wouldn't say that this is as nice as the Mercedes-Benz S-Class, but it is pretty darn close and probably the nicest electric car interior on the market today. I mean, it surpasses everything out there. It is pretty nice. So let's take a look at the front door. Starting with the top portion, you have this wetsuit fabric type of material that we first saw in the Mercedes-Benz EQC, which feels high quality and looks nice. I do like that it, it's, it's contrast in the color, that it is a gray color, and you also have contrast stitching. You have this ambient light strip because this car has the interior ambient lighting package and we're gonna see more of that in a second. That's why we're filming now a little bit late so I hope you guys have enough daylight to actually see everything here. But it is to show you guys the ambient lighting also. You can see you also have a strip there on the bottom section of the door. It just looks very, very nice. You have some metal trim here on the door and then you have some leather here with some more contrast stitching. And then here you also have more of that wetsuit fabric uh, type of material on the door pad. You have some open pour black wood here. You have some, well, uh, piano black plastic, anodized aluminum buttons and release for the door. You have your seat controls here. This is actually a touch panel, which is a bit weird to use at first, but once you get uh, you know used to it, it is, it's easy enough to use. There are a lot of different materials and all the materials are pretty nice. 
lower down here on the door you have soft touch plastics there are no cheap materials on this door even down here where you can't even see it where the reflector is this is still soft touch and then you have some lighting underneath there you have your trunk release button here also anodized aluminum you have anodized aluminum buttons here for the windows these are a pretty cool design and feel nice and high quality this car also has the optional Burmeister 3D sound system, so you can see that awesome looking speaker grill there. I think the system looks better than it sounds. It's an okay sound system, but at this price point, I was expecting more. It's not as good as the Barrison Wilkins I had in a Volvo XC90 a few years ago. But you have some cool details like this thing here, where you actually don't see it other than in the reflection of this window so that is uh, a pretty cool detail and guys i do apologize there are trucks driving past here so overall the front door looks pretty nice you can also see you have your heated seat there you have your cool seat but this button though i am not sure what that is because i tried pressing that button and every time it lights up the light it just turns off after a few seconds like that and again i do apologize about the trucks guys uh, you have your so you have your memory settings here one two and three now it's lighting now you can see there the light goes off it's pretty weird you have three memory settings here for the driver's seat which is which is pretty nice talking about the driver's seat it's an awesome driver's seat it's one of the most comfortable seats i've ever tested it's adjustable in every way you also have massaging functions and and all of that goodness here you also have this cushion which is super nice. But okay, let's take a step inside because it is super cold. But before that, you have this Mercedes kick plate here, which is illuminated and looks nice. Also, before we actually step inside, take a look at the interior ambient lighting. You can adjust this to every color, but I think with this black interior, it looks pretty awesome in purple. You can even see that on the side of the seats, guys. It is illuminated. So the party factor is pretty high in the EQS. This is maybe one of the nicest and coolest interior ambient lighting scenes I have seen in any car now in 2021. Pretty awesome. But okay, let's take a step inside and uh, get some heat. So you start the car with pressing this button here and my fingers are now freezing. So you press that button and then the ignition turns on. Let's see if we press it one more time and then we can also get the HVAC running. So we're gonna try to, uh, you know, uh, go through most of the infotainment system, but this is not going to be a detailed infotainment system video. It will be just too long. But we can talk about this screen here. This is the hyper screen. It's also an optional extra. It is 18 inches across and it is huge. You do have a driver's display here, which is 12.3 inches. And you also have a screen here for the passenger that is not illuminated or not started. Uh, if the car detects a passenger, it will start up. But you see that it actually starts up here. So that is, yeah, that is nice. So that's what that looks like. That's 12.3 inches. And overall, Mercedes claimed that from this edge to that edge, it's like 53 inches, which is, in my opinion, just a stupid way to measure three different screens. More correctly is this is 12.3, this is 18, and this is also 12.3 inches. You can see more of that, you know, um, that uh, cool ambient lighting. It just looks super nice. And also here on the air vents on the side, you can see that it's illuminated there in the middle. It just gives this interior a very nice ambiance. So this is the steering wheel. It is big, it is large, and I do love it. Covered in beautiful Napa leather, though this is in, uh, in plastic, which is kind of strange at this price point. But I think if you get this with, this has the ordinary black leather interior package, you can get this with an upgraded Napa leather package, then I think this is actually uh, Napa leather and with stitching. So this is, you know, the basic interior. And for being the base interior, it, it, it is nice enough. And knowing that you can get an upgrade is also nice because I would probably spend that extra money to get a even nicer interior spending this mon much money on a car. But okay, you have this, uh, you know, glossy black plastic here on the steering wheel. And then you have a lot of buttons here, which are actually physical buttons, though not the normal physical buttons. You don't have individual buttons. 
Uh, they're like a mixture of touch capacitive, but also physical. They work fine enough, but sometimes, you know, uh, uh, differentiating the different buttons is hard. And also, I've, I have had issues with pressing down here on the radar guided cruise control, where often I have to do several presses to get it to adjust the speed down. So here you have your reset for your cruise control, or to resume, I mean, uh, your last uh, speed. You have your cancel, you have your speed up and down, and then you have your distance. This is a bit strange that you only have a distance, one distance button uh, where you have to press this several times. It, it always defaults to the most uh, distance and then it goes down to shorter and shorter. Most cars, especially at this price point, has one to go up and one to go down. This does not. Maybe there just wasn't enough real estate, but uh, either way, it is weird. You can also adjust your screen from here. So you have your OK button. If you press that, it will ask you to, if you want to, and I do apologize guys that the infotainment system is in Norwegian. It's asking me, do you want to reset? And I do not want to reset. So I'm gonna press okay once again. Uh, this is a touchpad. So you scroll up like that. You can get your different settings. You can see here you get your map. Um, you can get your driver assistance packages. Uh, you can do consumption. You can do range. Uh, eco uh, showing there, you can do your trip computer, this is from reset, this is from start. So you can do a whole bunch of different settings. You can also go back like this. Um, let's see, if I go press home, yeah, if I press the home button, you can do different screens. So you can go full map, and then if you scroll up and down, it will zoom in and out. Uh, you can go to this assistant uh, view, just shows you that. Then you have uh, information spread out differently on the screen. And you have no other settings. Let's go right again. Uh, okay, so you can go to your sporty, set, sporty screen also. I have not seen these screens, guys. And then you cannot scroll up and down. That is interesting. And then you can go to your discrete. Uh, this is pretty nice. So it matches the ambient interior color. This is cool. This is cool. This is a bit, a, a bit different. And also, the quality of uh, you know the display is really, really impressive. The resolution, the frame rate, and the, just the colors and black levels are one of the nicest in the business. Let's see if we can get. Uh, no, you cannot get any more functions here. Uh, for your trip computer. So I use this to classic because you can, you know, get all your information. You have your speedometer on the left side and then you have your uh, power gauge on the right side. You have your uh, range there uh, based on your current driving style and then you have your absolute max range there. You also have your battery indicator here. You have 0% and then you have 100%. And then here, on the right side, you have your regen. So if I pull on these uh, paddles here, let's see if you press the brake pedal. No, okay, because the car is off. If I push, press on the paddle here, it will go down to most regen and it is like in a one pedal driving mode. Um, the annoying thing is that you have to do that every time. You just can't activate one pedal driving mode. Um, you also have your uh, uh, driving modes there that you adjust by pressing here. So this is, is called dynamic. So you can go into eco. Comfort, sport, and individual. And you can also hear those sounds. So this is what it looks like and sounds like. And then you have your EQ button here. This is your shortcut button to go into your battery percentage. You can also get your charging screen up here, which will show you down there. And all you know your, uh, your settings there for your EV stuff. Um, once you start up the car, this can seem also a bit laggy. I've experienced like I want to go and check my battery percentage. It takes like a minute or two before it lets me go in here. Also, if I press this, it gives you all your driver assistant settings. And I like to turn off lane keep assist. And that also all, often takes like a few minutes. I keep pressing this button here and it, like after a minute or two, it lets me enter the screen, which is pretty annoying. It's just the system booting up, but it just shows you that this is not a perfect infotainment system. I've had a few issues with, you know, laggy and, and also uh, pressing some of the touchscreen buttons here, especially for your, if you see here, this is your shortcut to your track while listening to music. 
it's not always responsive. So, I mean, the infotainment system looks nice. It's easy enough to use, but it has not been the most responsive and reliable that, you know, uh, combined with, uh, you know, this button here not working properly and also the lagginess of this button and also locking the car. There have been issues here with this car. But this screen is pretty darn nice. You have, this is your home but home menu, which is your, um, your map. But if you also press this, you do get uh, some information, you get apps, you get comfort. So if you go in here, you can get all of your settings for your massage, your seats, and the seats are pretty complicated. If you go into seats there, you can go your, to your lumbar support. And instead of just having a button on the side, you get this graphic here, which is, yeah, it's not something you want to adjust uh, every day, but once you set it, it, it is nice. You can also do your, your uh, the, the, on uh, adjust the uh, the support on the side of the seats and you can also go into your uh, your uh, heated steering wheel you can have extra heat here if you want yeah you have all your settings there go back into your home again and you can go into settings here and everything is in here and in my opinion they've simplified this MBUX compared to other MBUX systems it's just easier to use where other MBUX usually has been very overwhelming in my opinion this is just a bit simpler is it because you have more real estate to do things it may be that case but uh, either way it is easier to use so you have all your settings here it's not the easiest but it's much easier than you have had earlier you have all your settings here. But if you go back in here, you have your 3D camera. No, you have a 3D view. Look at this. Yeah, okay. Why would you ha want that? You have your 3D camera here. All your cameras here. So this is the 3D camera. Let's see if we can uh, pan around there. And this car is a different color with different wheels. That is interesting. But you also have your 360 camera. Let's see if we can get our 360 camera. So this is your front. Yeah, so here you have your front with your three with your 360 bird's view there, and then you have the backup camera, which it often defaults to while driving uh, and parking, which is nice. Let's go back into your home, and then you have your radio, you have your media, you have information here. Uh, this here you can see how the power is going from the batteries and to the motors, and from the motors while regening, and then back into the battery. And let's go ahead. The last screen here, that's the same EQ as you have down here. The last screen is your Apple CarPlay while connected to the phone. And this car seems to have only uh, 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 wired Apple CarPlay. I have not gotten, been able to got, get the wireless Apple CarPlay to work. So I'm not sure if it actually has that. Uh, you have your climate menu here. One thing I have found out though, is that you cannot put on your heated steering wheel uh, separate from your heated seat. So you have to go into your heated seat button here. Usually I just put it to one and then I get one on the steering wheel and it doesn't heat up the seat as much. Usually I, I, I'm warm enough in my body. I just want my hands warm. So that took me the longest time. I was digging through menus, but I was not able to find any settings for your heated steering wheel. But you can go, hi, Mercedes. Hvor kan jeg hjelpe deg med? Ta på rett varme. Kan du si det en gang til? Ta på rett varme. Beklager, men jeg kan ikke hjelpe deg akkurat nå. Ok, so I ask the car to put on the heated steering wheel and like 9 out of 10 times it just doesn't understand what I'm saying. And then it has a day where it's like can understand everything. So the Hey Mercedes is not the most reliable or the easiest to use. Uh, I would just not use it because most of the time it just doesn't work. It's not impressive at all. But here you can do your HVAC systems for your first row, your second row, and then you can also do air quality uh, and stuff like that. So you have all your settings, it's, it's easy to use. And if you press this screen here, yeah, it actually won't let you because there is no person sitting here in the passenger seat. But this is just an older version of the MBUX. But okay, guys, that was just a quick look into the infotainment system back to the interior. As I said, we have paddles behind the steering wheel to adjust your regen more aggressive and less aggressive. You also have one stock for adjusting basically all of your controls here, like your 
windshield wipers and stuff like that because this is a Mercedes. So on the right side here, you have your gear selector. And though it's nice that this has anodized aluminum, it just feels a bit cheap with this hard plastics here. It's strange that they haven't made this higher quality, this being, you know, such an expensive vehicle. How much money, more money would it make to just cost for to make this park something you interact with every day and all the time of higher quality? It's just a strange decision in my opinion, but it's, it's okay. I just wish it was nicer quality and it just cheapens the interior with this hard touch cheap plastic here. Talking about cheap plastic, the side visor also, it just, it just feels cheap and, and chintzy. I am not impressed. Here also guys, um, you can see more of that ambient lighting. This also has a panoramic sunroof that you can open up. So it's not as big or as expensive as other panoramic sunroofs because you can open it up. But looking at the rest of the interior, you have on top of the dashboard more of that, you know, uh, wetsuit material and you can see the uh, passenger, passenger front door. It looks pretty darn nice. You have leather here on the center console. You have more of that open pour wood. And then here you also have your volume button up and down. You can mute and you can also turn on and off your, um, your uh, media. This here is a fingerprint reader. So you can set your settings here. Uh, instead of, you know, having them attached to a key, you can have them attached to your fingerprint. You can have seven users, if I'm not mistaken. So that is pretty nice. And then here, this you can open up. So in front here, you have a wireless charging pad. You have storage here, two USB-C uh, ports. And then you have some cup holders here, which you can hide away. But if you press the bottom, they, they slide into place. And then you have this gra extra, you know, uh, piece here that grabs your drinks, which lets you, you know, have drinks of different sizes. That is pretty nice. And then you can just slide them out of the way like that. But I like the look when you close this up because it is super clean. And then below that, you have some storage here, more ambient lighting. And then you have more USB-C uh, ports there. So you have a lot of USB-C ports. That is pretty nice. And then you have this large center storage area where you can uh, store a lot of the stuff. And then you have even two more USB-C ports. So that is pretty nice. So let's take a look at the rear seats uh, before it gets too dark. And again, on the rear door, you have the same door handle like that, which pops up in that fashion. You have basically the same materials on the rear door. You have that wetsuit fabric, you have that ambient lighting, and then ambient lighting down there. Uh, leather insert, more of that wetsuit here on the, uh, the armrest, and then more of that black open pour wood. You have the Burmeister speaker grill there. Um, that, uh, you know, uh, glossy black plastic. And then you have the seat, heated rear seat. We're gonna put that on because I'm gonna step into the rear seat. More of that soft touch plastics and even down below here. So, I mean, materials are pretty, pretty impressive even inside here. Oh, that's actually, no, that's soft touch plastic also. Yeah, and then it's carpeted here on the inside. You also have more of that Mercedes-Benz um, Scuff plate there, that uh, aluminum plate, which is also illuminated. And of course, while we're stepping out of the car, we have more noise, I do apologize. So this seat is actually sat back quite uh, a bit. This is sat back to somebody more than six feet. And this leg room in the rear is impressive. Look how far I have put that seat back much farther than I would sit. And look at all of the leg room I have here. This is insane, this interior. It is so big and impressive. So if you need a lot of space, this is the car to go for because I don't think there's any EV on the market as big as this. You have, you know, your rear pocket here. You have an air vent here on the B pillar. And then you have another one there on the center console. You have four zone climate control, so you can adjust the temperature here. You also have heated rear seats. And then you have this panel here, which reveals two USB-C ports. So that is pretty nice. You also have more of that ambient lighting. And I'm just gonna close the door here. Look at this, guys. This is a feast to the eyes. And of course, maybe this is a little bit, uh, it's a little bit uh, too much for some people, but I think it just makes this car full of character and just, it's not too serious, right? It's a bit of fun. You can turn this off if you want, but it's, it just looks cool. And taking a look at the uh, front cabin, I mean, 
You may not like the exterior styling of this car, but how can you not like the this interior? Because this is one of the nicest interiors of any cars. The seat packs are of such soft touch plastic. It just feels and looks nice, this whole thing. Though, I wish you could have an option of just having a glass roof because I don't need to open up the roof to bring even more light into this interior. You do have an armrest there. Let's see if we can open up the door again and take a look at that armrest. Opens up like that and, oh, sorry guys, my camera. Opens up like that. And if you press this once, yeah, okay. Yeah, more of that Mercedes build quality for you guys. It's not gonna work, okay. But you do have an armrest where you have cup holders. Okay, lastly guys, let's take a look at the trunk. And this is one of also the best features of this car. This is so big, this trunk. It's 610 liters. And this is a hatchback. It's not a traditional, you know, four box saloon. It's a hatchback, so it's actually very practical. You can fold down the rear seats. So you have this expansive cargo area. And even with a child seat there and my camera bag, you can see in perspective how large this thing is. You also have underfloor storage here where I have put my tripod. There's a cable bag there and also a can of washer fluid. There is a lot of space in this trunk. It is amazing. So you can close it and you can lock it here uh, like that. I locked it. I didn't mean to lock it. Before we end this video, I just want to show you guys how much room there is in the rear seat here with a child seat in place. Look at that. This is so easy if you have children. They can crawl in here by themselves. You have room for shoes, bags, everything. When I pick up my daughter from daycare now in Corona, I have a bag, her backpack, all this stuff. There's room for that here and she can climb into the back easily for herself. So yeah. So there we go guys, that was the EQS on the exterior and on the interior and also showing you guys the infotainment system. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below and for more car content, as always guys, please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.